Good day, students. My name is Lassisi Ajadi, your physics teacher. Our topic for today is sound waves, under which we shall be looking at the production and transmission of sound, speed of sound in solid, liquid, and air, reflection of sound waves or echoes, music, and noise. The learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to use the concept of waves to analyze and explain one, the production and transmission of sound, two, velocity of sound in solid, liquid, and air, three, reflection of sound waves or echoes, four, music and noise. Now, definition of sound. Sound is a form of energy produced by vibrating bodies. It is a sensation which a vibrating object transmits to the air through an elastic medium. For example, if a rod is stroked at one end, the vibrating particles of the rod produce sound waves. Also, when we strike a turning fork, it prongs vibrate, and these vibrations give rise to sound waves. Sound energy can be transformed into other forms of energy, and other forms of energy can also be changed into sound energy. For example, in using a telephone, the sound energy of your voice is changed into electrical energy which moves through the telephone wire. The telephone receiver changes the electrical energy back to sound waves. Production of sound. Sound is produced by vibrating bodies. For example, if a vibrating turning fork is placed over a column of air, the fork sets the air into vibration and a sound wave is produced and propagated in the form of longitudinal wave. Transmission of sound wave. An, important, an important aspect of sound transmission is that a material medium is required for the passage of sound waves. That is, sound can only travel through solids, liquids, and gases, or hair. Sound cannot travel through a vacuum. Now, let's look at an, exper let's look at an experiment to show that sound cannot travel through a vacuum but requires a material medium for transmission. To do this, an electric bell is placed inside a bell jar from which air is gradually evacuated. As the air is removed from the jar with the aid of the vacuum pump, while the bell is ringing, the intensity of sound from the electric bell decreases and no sound is heard when all the air has been removed, leaving a vacuum in the bell jar, even though the clapper of the bell is still seen to be striking the gong of the bell. Sound is again heard when air is reintroduced in the bell jar. This shows that sound cannot travel through a vacuum. Let's take the velocity of sound waves. The velocity, the frequency, and the wavelength of sound waves are related by the formula V is equal to F lambda, where F is the velocity of sound waves, V is, the, pardon, V is the velocity of sound waves, F is the frequency of sound waves, and lambda is the wavelength of sound waves. It should be noted that the speed of sound varies from one medium to another. That is, it is least in air with about 332 meter per second at zero, at zero degrees Celsius and about 1,500 meter per second in water 
and about 5,000 meters per second in a steel rod. Also, speed of sound through any material depends on the density and modulus of elasticity of the material. We'll be back after a short break. Welcome back. We are going to take an activity on the velocity of sound waves. Activity one. What is the wavelength of the sound from a tuning fork which vibrates at a frequency of 200 hertz in air? Take the velocity of sound as 330 meter per second solution. Velocity of sound V is 330 meter per second. Frequency F is 200 hertz. Wavelength in question. Using the formula, V is equal to F lambda. Or the wavelength lambda is equal to V over F. We now substitute 330 for F, 200 for 330 for V, 200 for F. And when we simplify that, the wavelength is equal to 1.65 meter. Now, factors affecting the velocity of sound. Number one, velocity of sound is proportional to the square root of the absolute temperature of gas. Velocity of sound is proportional to the square root of absolute temperature of gas and has no effect on pressure of the surrounding air. That is, V is proportional to the square root of T. And this means that velocity increases with increasing temperature. Number two, wind affects the velocity of sound. That is, velocity increases if the sound travels in the same direction as the wind and decreases if sound travels in opposite direction. The pitch, loudness, frequency, and amplitude all have no effect on sound of velocity. Reflection of sound or the echoes. Reflection of sound gives rise to echoes. What is an echo? An echo is defined as a sound heard after the reflection of sound from a plane surface. Applications of echoes. Number one, determination of speed of sound in air. We can use echo method to determine the speed of sound in air by directing a sound signal to a wall and measuring the time taken for a sound travel for a sound that travel to the wall and back again. If X meters is a distance covered to travel to the wall, the sound takes time t seconds to cover twice this distance this distance so the total distance covered to hear the echo is 2x therefore the velocity of sound in air is given by 2x over t meter per second where x is the distance from the signal to the wall or plane surface t time taken for the sound to travel to the wall and return back again. Let's take another activity. Number two. A boy standing some distance from the foot of a cliff claps his hands and hears an echo 0.5 seconds later. If the speed of sound in air is 340 meter per second, how far is he from the cliff? Solution. Time to hear the echo T, 0 0.5 seconds. Velocity of sound V, it's going to 340 meter per second. Using V is equal to 2x over T. Or X, this from the cliff, is equal to VT over 2. 
We now substitute 340 for V, 0 0.5 for T, all divided by 2, to give the distance of the boy from the cliff as equal to 85 meter. Number two, determination of depth of seabed using echo sanding. An echo sanding method is used to determine the depth of a seabed from a ship. This principle involves sending a sand wave from a ship down to the seabed, knowing the speed of sand in the water, the time to receive the echo, then the depth x of the seabed is given by x is equal to vt over 2. We'll be back after a short break. Welcome back. We're still on applications of echoes. Number three, the echo sanding method is also used in oil and gas exploration. The frequency of sand used for this is about 50,000 hertz. That is, that is ultrasonic sound because the echo cannot be detected by human ear. Number four, detection of submarine. Underwater sound systems or devices called sonar use sound waves to detect underwater objects. Warships use sonar to locate enemy submarines and fishing boats can also use sonar system to locate schools of fish. Reverberation. What is reverberation? Reverberation is the perseverance of the sound after the source ceases. It is due to the multiple reflection of sound or echo of the original sound. An auditorium or hall where reverberation occurs is said to have poor acoustical properties. Excessive reverberation in a concert hall is undesirable and so is a disadvantage of echoes. Reverberation can be reduced in halls by covering the ceilings and walls with soft perforated boards, which can minimize the reflection of sound waves. Other methods are by hanging curtains around the hall and by having more openings on the walls. Noise and music. Sounds may be either musical or noisy. Noise is produced by sound or vibrations of irregular frequency, such as the rattling of a wheel on a rough road. Such irregular vibrations result in an unpleasant mixture of sounds, while music is produced by vibrations of regular or constant frequency to produce pleasant sounds. Now, I want you to take the following as your practice exercise. Number one, A. What is an echo? B. State two useful applications of echoes. C. Why are the walls, floors, and ceilings of a recording studio heavily padded? Number two. A source of sound produces waves in air of wavelength 1.65 meter. If the speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second, find the period of vibration in seconds. Number three, name and explain three factors that affect 
the velocity of sound. Number four, describe an experiment to show that sound needs a material medium for transmission. And this is where we're going to start, we're going to start for today. But next class, we shall be looking at characteristics of sound waves. I want to thank you all for listening and God bless you all.